Welcome to NYNJPA Weather, your severe weather source for the Northern Mid-Atlantic. I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino. We start the first full week of June with high pressure and control throughout much of the East Coast. Now this high pressure system has an origin from Central Canada and as a result, a polar Canadian air mass is in place throughout the Northern Mid-Atlantic. So what does that mean? Well, basically temperatures are averaging near normal with Temperatures this afternoon expected to range from the mid-70s over Long Island to the lower 80s over the Delaware River Valley. The good news is that with this high pressure system right overhead, clear skies can be expected for most locations with no precipitation. However, you notice these little disturbances, these yellow lines. These little disturbances at times can produce an extremely isolated thunderstorm, much like what we saw yesterday evening with where a severe thunderstorm was able to develop over Lancaster and Berks County uh, Pennsylvania around 7 to 9 p.m. and this severe thunderstorm rapidly dropped south and produced a little bit of wind damage a storm of that nature could possibly be possible this evening with these disturbances but for the most part, most locations will remain dry with clear skies and rather comfortable temperatures. Dew points also will remain low in the 40s and 50s, which means relative humidity is nice and low. So an excellent day to go outside and enjoy the weather conditions for this afternoon. This will not last, though, as we look at the latest water vapor satellite picture. The water vapor satellite picture this morning is already starting to show some changes in the atmosphere that are very key to the forecast throughout the rest of this week. As you can see, high pressure and plenty of sinking air is focused over the Great Lakes and much of the East Coast. And we have a northwesterly flow setting up. However, that northwesterly flow is starting to weaken because the whole ridge axis is starting to shift to the East Coast. And what does that mean? Well, you see this warm front and stationary front over the Mississippi River Valley. Behind this stationary front is some very hot and humid air. And to the south of it, well, that's the Gulf of Mexico, and that's where even more hot and humid air is going to be setting up. This high pressure system over the eastern Great Lakes will reposition off the Virginia coast by tomorrow afternoon, and then the hot and humid conditions will be on the way because the winds at the mid and lower levels will shift to the southwest, which will transport all this hot air that is building over the Mississippi River Valley and take it to the northern Mid-Atlantic. So we're looking at a very hot and humid week on the way. So enjoy today because today is going to be the last day that we're going to have low humidity. Here on out, the humidity starts to rise and you'll notice the difference by tomorrow afternoon and you'll really see the difference by Wednesday. So we move to the model guidance. This is the European model guidance at 500 millibars on Tuesday afternoon, which is tomorrow. And as you can see, our high pressure system is off of the southern mid-Atlantic coast. And I have an orange line here showing that the moist air and the hot conditions are all being transported into the northern mid-Atlantic. Now tomorrow we'll have a little bit of a step up back into the upper 80s rather than the lower 80s over much of the New York City and Philadelphia metropolitan area. The humidity will definitely start to increase. You'll notice it by tomorrow morning where lows are only in the lower to mid 60s as opposed to this morning where they were in the mid to upper 50s. So you'll definitely notice an increase in the humidity in the air mass and also potential for some fog. Notice though that all the frontal boundaries are well to the west. So any chance of a shower or thunderstorm in this pattern for tomorrow afternoon, Wednesday, and Thursday will have to be induced by a small mesoscale feature, which really can't be forecast, and we'll just have to keep an eye on it. So I don't expect any type of widespread precipitation through the middle of this week into Friday morning. Instead, I can't rule out an isolated shower or thunderstorm in the afternoon because of the increasing instability in the atmosphere. One feature, though, that will have a major impact, of course, on the northern Mid-Atlantic and on your health is going to be this heat and humidity. With temperatures skyrocketing into the mid to upper 90s and dew points in the 60s, that's going to create a heat index breaking 100 degrees. Now, if you have any young children, elderly, those who are medically inhibited, be careful with this heat wave. 
drink plenty of water, stay indoors, wear light clothing, and don't try to be macho. Don't try to think, oh, this heat isn't so bad. Make sure you have plenty of water with you because this type of air mass, the first of this summer, impacting on the human body can be significant and could catch you by surprise. So use some caution. Temperatures are going to be very hot on Wednesday and Thursday afternoon. I would not be surprised if someone around some location around southern New Jersey, around the Philadelphia metropolitan area, breaks 100 degrees in this pattern. So when does the heat break? Well, I'm looking for Friday. By Friday evening, our cold front will be moving through New England and eastern Pennsylvania. Now, notice the cold front starts to stall over the Ohio River Valley. This is because the best dynamics and lifting at the 500 millibar and 700 millibar level will all be focused, once again, over southeastern Canada. As a result, the best dynamics will be focused to the north of the northern Atlantic, so there is a chance, much like the last severe event, where the worst severe weather is over southern New England, and New York City and Philadelphia generally misses out on the brunt of the severe weather. We're going to have to keep an eye on that potential. Otherwise, ahead of this cold front, temperatures will be in the upper 80s to mid 90s, depending on how much cloud cover exists ahead of this cold front. And humidity will be very high, so we're looking at a very hot and humid afternoon once again on Friday, followed by showers and strong to severe thunderstorms. These thunderstorms that I'm concerned about could feature isolated tornadoes once again, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Large hail, strong wind gusts, and very heavy downpours. The timing of this frontal boundary will be key in determining how bad these impacts will be. But it looks like that Friday afternoon evening will be very active for the northern mid-Atlantic. Now as we head into the weekend, the question that will basically determine what type of weather we'll have this weekend is just how far south this cold front gets before it stalls. Notice we have high pressure over southeastern Canada. The stronger that this high pressure system is able to build to the south, the more that skies will clear and weather conditions will be rather pleasant for the New York City and Philadelphia metropolitan area. Right now the models are wavering on this idea here because there's not sure just how far south this stationary front is going to be able to get before it sets up. And just to the north of the stationary front, well that's where we can expect cloud cover and scattered showers. So I don't expect any severe weather for this weekend, but certainly there will be a potential for, let's say, the New York City metropolitan area ends up being clear and rather comfortable, low humidity and temperatures in the upper 70s to low 80s. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia metropolitan area ends up being rather cloudy, showery, and raw. So we'll have to keep an eye on that and see exactly how this pattern works out. Thank you for trusting in NYNJPA Weather, your severe weather source for the northern Atlantic. I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino. Have an excellent day.